lately, there have been many things that have challenged our air, right? When the police come and drag us off the aina, that is certainly a challenge to our exercise of air, right? And I should explain too that um, some people may not know what that means. You know, a lot of people have heard ua mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono, right? Ua mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. A lot of people hear it as that's the state motto, quote unquote, well, it's the stolen motto is what it is, of our collective mana'o of Hawaii. And what that means is ua mau to perpetuate on and on into the foreseeable future and the unforeseeable future. Wamau. Ke'ea. Ke'ea. The life breath that's inside of each one of us, which is also the sovereignty within each of us. The sovereignty inside of each one of us and within us collectively. Wamao ke'ea oka aina of the land ikopono kapono righteousness rightness correctness so you have these two great concepts ea the sovereignty within each person and within ourselves collectively, yeah? That implies the ability to choose, the ability to say no, the ability to do what must be done according to the instructions given to each one of us directly, right? And you have pono, because to exercise air is it truly air if you're not being pono? It might be something else. So those two great concepts go hand in hand through exercising air, through practicing air, through being sovereign every day. Way that we need to keep that moving forward is to continually balance those forces, right? You have the force of air, you have the force of pono, and those two need to stay together. And sometimes it's not that easy to keep them together, but we have to do that. Why is there this need to shut that down? Well, the exercise of air is directly threatening to those who govern in such a way that is not pono. So the moment you dissociate pono from the air of the people, you know, you, you, you already can't. It's already, you, it's already wrong. Sometimes we need to look at how air is manifested in the moving forward of all that we do, you know? And um, given that one large theme for manifesting Pono of late has certainly been the principle of Kue or resistance, right? Because without resisting the forces that are attempting to destroy permanently places, waters, cultures, people, then we're in a whole lot of trouble, right? So the manifestation of air does necessitate kue, resistance, right? And it also necessitates pono. So it has to be kue of a pono nature manifesting 
the air of the people. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. So. Um. I guess this is my long way of basically saying that um, you know, as we go forward, and we really uh, do this, manifest our own personal kue and our own personal air through that kue pono. And we recognize and we support one another in doing that. That is how we're moving the healing of our aina forward.
this is Taloi Kaimi. Kaimi, would you like to tell us something to the people in Hawaii? Uh, yes, it's mahalo everybody for you guys continue support. Yeah, today we was arrested and we just, we just, uh, we just got out back home over here. Uh, it was a very successful day in exposing uh, the situation here of the error of the county and how they put a taxation on the lo'i. So, uh, in all in all, yeah, we got we got arrested and we all, we all have uh, court dates to appear in court and that is somewhere where we could uh, present our case and our situation and um, because they didn't let us uh, assert our rights and our, our interests and our titles to the land. So, we kind of had to get that way so we got arrested and stuff to have a hearing, you know. I did see that the machines came in here, as we were told, and you can see the evidence of the excavator that came in here, mm. which they don't have any jurisdiction. As a tribal historic preservation officer too, I have this place uh, registered with the Department of Interior. And uh, the Department of Defense is something that we're working with right now to uh, you know, uh, s settle this matter and uh, you know, make things pono and preserve this the, the lo'i because you kind of have a taxation on the lo'i. The konohiki sets the value of the taxation or sets the value of the lo'i, of the aina. And um, it's totally illegal what they're trying to do. They want to put a house side on a, on a lo'i and uh, that's not pono. This is a, a pano one actually for kiva'a in this royal pattern here, here in uh, Kailili in Wainiha. It's a very ancient place of our families. We have burial sites here. And uh, as you can see, we have our religious shrines here and where we all come to pule and pray and uh, manifest good stuff for our people. But anyways, yeah, we'll be back and uh, we just regroup in and stay tuned everyone. And I, I, tomorrow we're gonna be on the radio show, uh, KKCR, uh, tune in and, and see what the latest is. And if you guys have a, you guys can and you wanna come and uh, Kukia uh, Ihaloa, shout out to all the Ohana all around the Pai Aina. Uh, come over here and, and come talk story. Come, we go uh, Valaa and learn and Kuka Kuka ceremony. You know, it's, it's, a, it's just a vigilant thing. You know, we stay in ceremony. And, um, you know, just come learn and protect Haloa. And, you know, being, this is an example to uh, expose this to the light and where all our families and members can find and research and know about these allodial titles and bring these things to surface and uh, you know have some kind of uh, resolution of these lands where we, we, we uh, do what the right thing is what is Pono so
That was That's good fun, huh? Yeah. That's right, real stuff. You get something for sure. Not just plain. Don't buy the taro gonna grow and you're gonna have something for feed the family. Feed the ohana, boy. Don't buy when you like make lao lao or luau, you can come pick the luau leaf. Yeah. But you hope to, you get some of it. Oh, Roger that, you know already, when you cook you gonna go, you gonna be eating. Ah boy, that's so on. Hey, good job, good job, good job. That's how you do it. You say, covering them up, yeah, so one by when the sun gonna come, he gonna... All, the, all this banana leaf gonna keep the ground nice and moist. And when you break down to it, feed feeds the, the soil, feeds the awa, so the next thing you know, next you know the awa will come all big and strong and then and when we come over here for, for hammo, for hammo the root, we're gonna have a big root ball. And Uncle, good because when it rains, all the dew is gonna come down into there. Yeah, it collects all, and even at night time, all the dew, you know how it get dew at night? All the dew gonna collect all on the leaf let out, and in morning time, it's all gonna just go inside the lap and yeah. feed the plant. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> nice one, yeah. Oh, careful, yeah. Shut the machete shop, boy. I work with machetes all day. Do you? Yeah, right. I chop down trees in my dad's backyard. <laughs> hey, we love that. We love that, Kohana. But sharper. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta make sharp, yeah, boy. And you can use stones to make it sharp. And boy, you know how they tell? If no more water, Go we'll find the water and bring them. Put them inside the lo'i. No more the water, put the water inside the lo'i. Because you know the Kanakas, you have the right to the water, no matter where you go. So no scared, go go get the water. Feed the turtle patch. It's the army right here. <laughs> this is the up and coming warriors right here. The Kamali of Wainiha. Mumbai, these guys gonna be, they gonna be in the lo'i planting and, and they gonna be the ones um, taking on the torch too of our kuliana. Oh! You need kokua, boy? No need! Next one, next one, we go the kind. You guys gotta come back more early in the day and then we can the kind jam all kind. Tomorrow we can jam all day and all night. Okay, well, I see you later, Levaya. Why? Mama, wait, wait. <laughs> the Kamali'i. It's a blessing to have them. Love having the kids around us. They're definitely why we stay doing this, to to make sure that they always gonna have one place. Cause if if they gonna if they gonna take all these places away from us then not gonna gonna be on concrete jungle like Oahu. And this is the garden island, supposed to have gardens everywhere. So those are the Kiki of Wainiha that live around here, huh? Yeah, yeah. They live they live right down the road. It's all like um Pule, Ohana and um Chandler boys, some of the Chandlers which is all Mawiki Ohana and but all family. It's all, yeah, it's all the, come of the kiki from around. They all live down the road and they all go to school, Hanalei school, but yeah, they all they always come ride their bikes up here and and the kind. And now they always come check us out in the lo'i, come check us out and usually me and Kalimi, we try to influence them and put them to work where they should be inside, you know, getting connected with their roots and whatnot. And we just try and keep them rooted and just give them that proper place where they, they always, we, we make that energy for them like that where it's always open and welcome for them to come over here. They're always welcome for come over here anytime. 
and we love that. We, we when we see them come, oh, I come how holy when I see the boys come, because that's the very boys should be inside the lot over here learning and whatnot. Because they, there's, there's the, you know, the up and coming from this place, and they gotta learn the real thing. And that's why us guys we trying to perpetuate the real thing and not the kind um perpetuate the uku. We gotta, you know. Um, we got a Malama Arculiana, and it's it goes all the way, all the way to our keiki and, and then some. Your family is from Wainiha from a long time. Yes. Yeah. So, um, are there practices that are unique to you, Wainiha that you're able to perpetuate here? Practices or plants or um, you know, are there things that you're doing here that are um, important to perpetuating the culture specifically of Wainiha? Wainiha is well known for uh, it's very uh, the the special families here that you know. They cook up a lot of food for all the families, so that's one thing that we do. We cook a lot and share a lot of food. Most of our fishing, traditional fishing, is not only in the ocean but also in the river, and, and uh, passing those things on and keeping things alive. Uh, net making, hunting uh, for pua'a. Uh, not only that, but you know, using uh, la'au, uh, la'au lapa'au that we have, you know, medicines and, and uh, plants that grow around and abundantly. And also building canoe parts for our voyaging canoes and, and stuff like that. But Wainiha is known for uh, its for its ohanas and the way they the lifestyles that they have, and not only kalo, but everything else. Watching the place change over and over, especially them uh, removing the stones and not respecting the access to the burial sites. You know, somebody has to say, you know, this is enough. Someone, you know, we had something has to be done, you know, to to stop them or to bring in a different energy. So most of all, it was just the interest to the lo'i and malama the lo'i. And we, we take care and put the kalo back where it belongs. And, you know, grow food for the ohana. It's pretty simple. And that's where we stand, standing in the lo'i. And from that lo'i, you're able to feed some, the, some of the keiki of the community also, and the people. Yeah, like, uh, you know, we gather, Everything here and uh, what we what we have, you know, kalo, lo'i, uh, you know, we have the ma'a, uh, many different fruits, you know, uh, ava, a lot of vegetables too that we have growing here. So you know, just just practicing that food security for our own selves and you know, not to be depending on outside uh, GMO. Uh, how should you say? Uh, contaminated foods that we don't know where it came from but you know these are practices that our families uh, lost not only because of uh, you know separation from their land but also just the separation from their livelihood so it's, it's just a way to connect you know it's, a, it's just a way of connecting and being Pono who we are it's about preserving them and passing it on to our Ohana and everyone else to learn and so we can implement that in everyone's lives to be healthy and you're passing it on to future generations we share as best as we can and aloha everybody now is the palima now is the time for put our hand on aina we know the four corners of our world now it's the part time of the palima so to support the generations they can carry on from here that's what that's what this represents to me this was the promise of the prophecy of the Kupunas. For Manao Nui, till the time come when we don't see and so we can move forward. It's all important. And without this kind of a group in an area, as we've seen many places, next thing you know, 
There is no Koa Forest. There is no Lehuas. Kaimi, can you tell me what does Aloha Aina mean to you in this context? Uh, Aloha Aina for me uh, pretty much means to be on the Aina and uh, to malama e, to, to make pono and let our ohane and our family, uh, kupuna guardians, guide us. And Aloha Aina to me also is showing what you know by doing and by creating and most of all sharing and uh, Aloha Aina to me is uh, you know, standing up also for what you know is pono and going against anything that's wrong or heva and Aloha Aina to me is also enjoying and with the family and passing it on that way.